Welcome everybody to a special episode of the Heel Caps. Tonight we have a very, very special guest. We have Larkin joining me, but we also have pro wrestler Mario Bacara. How you doing, Mario? Very good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, very excited to have you on. Um, we definitely want to hear about your story. But uh, so, so tell us about uh, your birth birthplace. Uh, well, I was originally. Uh, I'm from New Milford, New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey. My family, my father actually was born in uh, Privlaka, Croatia, so which which is where the Croatian heritage comes from. So that is that is my real name and is my real nationality and heritage. It's not like that was a gimmick. Some people thought that <laughs> I made up that name and made up made up my heritage, but it's that's one hundred percent real. My, that's my real name. It's my birth name. it's and my, part of my my heritage. so. <clears throat> but I'm uh, originally from New Jersey, and I was about 30, I'd say 38 years in New Jersey, and now I'm currently residing in Tampa, Florida. Uh, but just to interject, I mean, so when you say, like, you're Croatian and, like, you were born Croatian, you're not like the Nikita Kolov gimmick. Like, he wasn't really Russian, so you're actually who you right. are. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not like, I, w- I didn't decide to play a, a Russian when I'm actually, you know. Like, of course. That's my, I said, it's my real name. It's my birth, birth name. It's, uh, it's my real heritage. My, my mother's, uh, full Italian. My, my father's full Croatian. So. Well, that's cool, man. But I think my, my mother was born here though. So. Oh, awesome. Well, um, I, I look at it like this, Mara, like you, you're living up to your Croatian. I mean, with people in Croatia or around the world. And I think that helps as far as the international standpoint, as well as, you know, getting your name out there and representing your people. And it shows a lot, the pride and powerful that we see in professional wrestling today. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was great to be able to do you know have carry my my father's name and the, the you know with the, that nationality and carry the flag. I was the first guy to carry the Croatian flag on TV for Impact. So that's awesome, which was pretty cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of firsts that I got to do. It just didn't really didn't get to where I wanted to get as soon as I wanted to get there. <laughs> yeah, well, we saw that on Impact with you and Fala Bob, Monster Factory tag team champions coming in on the scene doing your thing when Impact was GFW Global Force Wrestling at the time. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we had gotten um, that. We had met. We had met Jeff Jarrett and Global Force. We worked with them at uh, PWS before we were WrestlePro, and uh, also working at Monster Factory. We were working with Abyss. He he had come in as well and uh, had seen us while we were there. And he was good friends with Danny and Danny Cage of the Monster Factory, and who I, I owe a lot of lot to him as well too for bringing me and Fala down and doing something with us. And Danny Cage is a really awesome guy, so I owe a lot to him. I probably I wouldn't even be here today in, in Florida if it wasn't for Danny. So. Well, funny, um, well, funny story. I don't mean to cut you off, but funny story. No, about, of course. Funny story about like pro wrestling syndicate now wrestle pro. Like I'll remember as a kid, New York WLNY TV fifty five. Like at three four yeah. o'clock in the morning, you get to see some <laughs> pro wrestling syndicate action with Kevin Matthews and all the mm-hmm. great talents of pro wrestling syndicate. So that's like a memory for me. You looking great indies like yourself and how wrestle pro came into fruition. How we see how that's blown up. Yeah, yeah. PWS was a lot of fun. It was a lot of firsts for us all, and. um you know, working with Kevin and uh, Pat Buck, who was a co-owner at the time, but now he's the, you know, he was the head owner of WrestlePro and what he's done. And he's been also a huge uh, influence for me. I mean, I wouldn't be who I am without Pat Buck. So, I mean, I owe a lot to him as well. Yeah, and I mean, you have Platinum Pat Buck and you had like Jersey All Pro Wrestling and with God Rest His Soul, Fat Frank, and you had God Rest His Soul, Ellie yes. Firehawk with NWA Cyberspace, Cyberspace Wrestling Federation. Like a lot of great like companies and, you know, promotions overall in the independent circuit that we saw in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot. It's, it's so funny that you have all that information already, so. Um, dude, that's it's a my... lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's going back a long ways. <laughs> well, dude, that's my childhood right there. Wayne, New Jersey. I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing up some good memories, though. It's good memory. Hey, yeah. hey Mario. Um, so I gotta ask you, what was your first memory of professional wrestling? Like, what really got you in to professional wrestling? Oh, oh, like like the first time I ever saw wrestling, or yeah, yeah. Okay, for me, for me, it was the Saturday. I uh, think it was the main event, and it was the, it was the two Hebners when Hogan wrestled Andre, yep. and they did the screw job finish. With yes. two reps. I was I remember I was a kid, I was watching it and I was really young. I think I might have been like I think it was like eight or something like that. I'm pretty what was it, eighty four or eighty eight? 
That was like 80, I think was, late 80s, 88. Yeah, 88. I'm pretty sure it was 88. And um, <clears throat> I remember I was watching it, and I was like so young at the time, too. Like that was late for me to be up. So I was watching it, and I fell asleep in the middle of it because I was, you know, eight years old, seven years old. And I w- remember the next morning I woke up and I went over to my father and I said, who won? And he told me, he said, Andre won. And I was like, no way, you're full of shit. Can I curse? It's yeah. too late. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I didn't, I didn't believe him. So I had to find out for myself how and why. And ever since then, it was like, I was hooked. That was it. And I remember getting, before I had even seen wrestling, Someone in my family gave me one of the large, um, the the rubber, ha- oh, the Hasbro's, were they Hasbro's or the, not Hasbro, the <clears throat> original action figures. I think they those were the LJN. Yes, yep. the yeah. LJNs, the big rubber ones. And somebody in my family gave me a Hulk Hogan LJN rubber figure, and I had never even seen wrestling, but then I had noticed that that guy on TV was the same guy that I had on an action figure. So that was like the first time I'd ever seen like, cause otherwise there was he man, you know, transformers, you had things like that. So you were like, this was the first time that I'd seen an action figure that I had not be a cartoon. Like it was an actual person. And I remember putting the two together. And ever since then, like that was it, I was hooked. Like if wrestling was on, I watched it, you know, like that was my first memory of watching wrestling and getting hooked. I guess um, you, you were you were a lot like me. I mean, Andre <laughs> Hogan, yep. WrestleMania three. That's that's exactly yeah. how I got into wrestling. Yep. And then that was the next. That was that was the next step. Was that match? So it was like, and then that was like, yeah, that was probably one of my. I remember getting that from the video store. Oh, it was WrestleMania three? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was great going into a blockbuster or wherever and just going down there and seeing all the pay-per-views and mm-hmm. i used to love <laughs> because, that on a friday night going to blockbuster video and pick out a wrestling tape and the video game i was sad uh, i was good yep that was life <laughs> bag of Doritos. Don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean bag of chips bottle of soda ready to go oh, yeah. so um i guess as you got older obviously what made you uh want to be a well you kind of already explained what why you wanted to be a wrestler who well, really I mean, got you your foot in the door well i mean i was always kind of like hooked into wrestling and, and my mother was always really you know on me with like my mother wanted to be a, a dancer like a ballet dancer like a you know like a broadway dancer my mother was always had that dream and she had always told me she said just if you have a dream follow it whatever it is just do it you know like and she was always the kind of one that kind of made me realize that I could, you know, like if I wanted to do something, I could do it or at least try it. And so she was always like my biggest supporter of uh, of things. But until I told them after I got out of high school that I wanted to go into wrestling, of course, everybody was like, well, if you want to do that, you have to pay for it yourself. <laughs> I was like, come on, this is such a cheaper route. It's like three grand. You know, I'm like, you don't got to pay for four years of school. I'm like, it's a one time fee. And they were like, no, no way. You either have to work or you have to go to school. If you want to do that thing, you got to do it on the side. So I'm like, all right. So I worked full time and I did that on the side. But um, my my original like first time of when I thought I would really like wanted to wrestle was we used to go. To, I used to go to Madison Square Garden with my friend Andy in uh, high school. We used to go. My mother had no idea. We used to take the bus into the city and we'd go for all the house shows and all these other times. And she would go nuts if she found out that I went to the city with, without a, an adult before I was even graduated from high school. But we used to go to watch all the sh- house shows and whatever we could. And I think we were, uh, one time it was right when Shawn Michaels had re- originally came back and started was baby face. Like right after he, he got, he, I think it was, he wrestled Owen Hart and he won the intercontinental title. Oh. Yes. Yeah, right at that moment when he I kind of came back and he was a babyface now after being the heartbreak kid and he was the heel. He lost to Diesel at WrestleMania 11. It was in between 11 and 12. Oh, yeah, when and he had that had iconic done... match with Shawn Michaels and Jeff Jarrett for the Intercontinental title, yep. Yes, with Jeff Jarrett, yes. And I remember because that was right after Owen Hart and the whole um, the, the kick to the head. Oh, yes. The yeah, it was like around that whole year. 
and we went to Madison Square Garden, and this was the first time he was a babyface, and he hop, he he won his match, and he hopped he hopped the rail, and he was walking out through the crowd, and we all ran over there, and I remembered like getting to just like hold, like grab hands with him, kind of like a like if you were gonna bro hug somebody, like you know that that like clasp of hands that you do. Yep. Yes. And we I did that with him, and I was like losing my mind, and that was like. Kind of for me, that was like, I don't know. That was the moment where I was like, I'm going to be, I want to be a wrestler. Like, that's it. Like, I don't care. Like what I got to do, I'm going to be a wrestler. And I was like, for whatever reason, I don't know what sunk in that day. But ever since then, I was just like, that's it. You know, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. Well, uh, why don't you tell us about your, uh, what school you went to and uh, part of your training? Uh, I originally was trying to go to Monster Factory. Uh, the only school that I had known of was Monster Factory. And the same friend that I went to the Madison Square Garden shows with Andy, we went down to try to find Monster Factory. And we, they were having a show, and this was before GPS and, you know, like all that stuff. So <laughs> I think we might have tried to MapQuest something on online and tried to – we had handwritten directions – and we never found the place. We drove around for maybe eight hours, six, eight hours all that whole night in Pennsylvania and back, and we couldn't find it. And um, then I came back up, and a friend of mine, I was working in Paramus Park Mall and at the formal wear store, and a friend of mine was like, yo, I know somebody who's a wrestler. And I'm, he's like, he's like your height, your age, your weight. And I'm like, really? And he was like, yeah. And so this guy, it was a uh, guy by the name of Sure Thing Ryan Wing. I don't know if you guys remember him. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't. I remember. This, yeah. I remember John the Sure Thing Shane, but I don't remember no Sure Thing Ryan. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was he was his name was the Sure Thing Ryan Wing, and he was come from East Coast Pro Wrestling (ECPW). Gino Caruso. Out right? of, yes, out of Lake Hiawatha with Gino Caruso. Nice. So he had given me a, a card, and he said, "Yeah, you know, like go up whenever." And I went up and I talked to Gino, and he's like, "Whenever you're ready, we're here." And I went. I started my training in February of 2000 at ECPW Lake Hiawatha with Gino Caruso. And a lot, I learned a lot from the Kodiak Bear as well while I was up there. I think with you, like, you're under that, you know, tutelage. You get we learn from guys like Kodiak Bear, Gino Caruso. I know Rip Rogers as well. I mean, when you think of, like, Southern wrestling, if you will, you think of guys like Rip Rogers, you think of Cornette with his managerial skills, you think of guys yeah. like George South. So, I mean, you, you had a hell of a learning tree. Yeah, I started with, with Gino and, and Bear and um, – a lot of the guys, like, um, there was, like, four, a group of us that kind of worked with each other and trained each other a lot. And it was um, Andrew Anderson, Red Hot Russ, uh, Johnny Thunder, and myself. All four of us were kind of like, we worked with each other a lot for the first four or five years that I was at Geno's. And in that time, too, I would go to Tom Pritchard camps, Dr. Tom camps, whenever I could go. I would always go up to Massachusetts or wherever, wherever we could find him. We would go to clinics with him. And camps because it wasn't it wasn't like it is now like where they, they want you to go work everywhere they used to not want you to work anywhere else like they would only want you to work for them and that was like it most of the places especially a long time ago nobody wanted you to work for anybody but them so it's different now everybody's like you have to go out and, and get work and we knew that back then you needed to go out and learn more and get work everywhere to be better sure but the promoters didn't you know what i mean all the promoters were the same yeah. nobody wanted you to go anywhere else you know but we already knew that it, it's kind it's, of it, it, it's kind of like that old school thinking if i let my guy wrestle over here they're just gonna steal him kind of right Is yeah it was like it was, yeah and they were still kind of in like territory mode in their minds like this was their territory like so if we're in Jersey and you go work for another Jersey company, then they're only going to come over there and they're not going to come over here anymore. But I think they knew that if you left, you weren't going to come back eventually. But I always felt like if everybody just worked together, it would have been fine, you know, but. I mean, there's an old adage like united, not divide. I mean, you see everybody going places, whether it be from Impact Wrestling on the indies, like an NYWC, Creator Pro, Wrestle Pro. Oh, I'm going to go over here to Ring of Honor. You see a lot of people moving around, kind of like in the old territory days. It's kind of like what's old is new now. I mean, you get to see a lot of people working, and it's great just so everybody can hone and apply their crafts in different promotions. Oh, yeah, the way it is now is everybody goes around and they're working everywhere, which is great, you know, like, and that just helps them and helps the promotion. It helps, you know, guys learn more. It's like, you know, that was just... We always were like, if everybody just worked together, it would be just such an easier, a better place. Like, 
you know, and now look at the way wrestling is now. It's like, it's just such a different state than it was 20 years ago. Like yeah. when I first got into it. It's kind of like but, when you look at like the women's divisions as well. Like you see so many great women's divisions in the pro wrestling promotions like Ring of Honor, you know, WWE, Impact yeah, Wrestling, what have you. And stardom in Japan, but it's just like you see like, you see like, for instance, Shimmer, Shine, Rise. Those are like three right. prominent ones right there for the ladies as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of the women, I mean, some of the women's matches now are like, I mean, like, for me, it was like even one of like my top five matches of all time is like Sasha Banks versus Bailey yeah. at Brooklyn. And that's like that's one of like my top five favorite matches like ever. I think, and I would watch some of their matches and just kind of like because they were working at like a slower pace as well, Mm -hmm. telling more stories. So it was like they kind of got me. You know, it was always like they they were. It was it wasn't what you it wasn't how much you did and what you did. It was how you did it that makes it. You know, like and that was like a perfect example of like that match was like. Yeah, and the just psych- perfection. Yeah, the psychology in that, like the reverse yeah. Rana she did off of that, like th- it told a great story. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, Mario, as a kid growing up, going to Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 20, like the two women's matches on that card were Victoria yeah. and Molly Holly, and you had yeah. the pillow fight. And here's the thing. It's so much change, and it's great to have that sex appeal, but it's like let these girls wrestle. Give them time. There's a lot of shine. There's yeah. great with the appeal, but let them go out and do their thing. Yeah, it's a different – it's it's nice to see that, you know, that – the women are getting a you know a platform to go on because like even like the rumble matches like some of the rumbles some of the years the past couple of years i think one of the rum i don't remember which year it was but i thought the women's rumble was better than the men's one time um some of the hell in the cell matches have been great like i mean i was a huge fan of sasha banks anyway i think she's one of the really good workers i mean and the four you know charlotte becky sasha i mean all of them together were like you know it's it's great to see the, the women's division now i think like Bianca Belair is amazing. Mm-hmm. I think she's going to be a huge, a huge star. Um, I mean, there's just so many uh, Rhea Ripley that's doing now. I mean, Shayna Baszler, like we saw her when she first came on the Indies, and it's like just to see where she's at now. Um, it's great, you know, like as opposed to you know the way some of the women were perceived back in the day on it, you know. And it's it's just the way like it's just the way that maybe it's not even wrestling. I think it was just the way that that the world was kind of, you know what I mean? Like it's yes. it really, you know, like it was just kind of the way um, culture was or reality, you know, based stuff was, it's just the way it was. So it's just, it's nice to see that, you know, they're just as good, if not better than the men, you know, by any means, hands down. Of you course. Know? I mean, when you had Sasha Banks and uh, chaotic wrestling and as Mercedes KV and to see where she's come, I mean, it's my God. Oh, Mercedes Martinez. I mean, like, forget it. I'm like, I knew her from, so far back in the day and i was always like even her and um sumi uh, sumi sakai yes. like i was like i love you guys you guys are awesome like i would just tell them to their face i'm like i straight up love you guys like just as wrestlers like i'm like they're just amazing and when she i'd popped- watch some of their matches and they were just incredible yeah when she popped up in the aew battle royal and then she did the may young classics i'm like this woman for the time of work that she's put in i mean like i said around the same time with you in the 2000s mario it's like, yeah this girl's got to be signed and now she's doing her thing on nxt I was so happy to see her in the Women's Rumble this year. Like, I was like, I had goosebumps. Like, so awesome that Mercedes Martinez got to be in the Women's Rumble. Like, a WWE Women's Rumble. Like, that's amazing. You know, and Mia Yim, too. I, she was from, she was in Jersey Opera with us doing Southside Players Club. Like, she was with us, you know, and to see where she's gone now, it's like, we knew, too, from Go. I was like, she was like, we, I kind of thought she was like the uh, well, female version of Loki, mm-hmm. like, at the time. Like, mm-hmm. just her style, it was like, she was just awesome. Just to go back to Jersey All-Pro for a second, I mean, you're in the sure. list of who's who's, man. I mean, your low keys, your homicides, your Jay Lethal, dare I say, Azriel. I mean, we had so many talents in Jersey All-Pro wrestling, that, that's an alumni yeah. all in itself. Yeah, I mean, Jersey All-Pro, and then working with, uh, I worked with Jay Lethal for Ace Pro Wrestling with Mike Morgan. That was where I first worked with Danny Moff. Um, we got to work with uh, Daniel Bryan. Christopher Daniels out there. I mean, like, that's like, I, it's like, it's so weird. Cause it's like, I've only like, when I look back on things, it's like, I've gotten to work with so many people, like even like Kenny Omega, Sammy Callahan through PWS and, um, evil before he was evil. He came from New Jersey, uh, um, New Japan over and he was, um, working with us as yep. well. Yeah. Watanabe. And it was just like, I mean, it's just so many people. Like I look at it now and I'm like, wow. I'm like, 
I really got myself around. <laughs> you know, like it's like impressive for me. I'm like when I look back at it, as far as you know, I don't, I don't think of myself as you know. I'm, I'm, I'm my own worst critic, my own worst enemy. I don't think highly of myself a lot, which is just like I think it's just a personal thing. But I look back on things that I've done, and I'm like, you know what? I, I've got a pretty decent resume, I think. So, you know. Well, I think I think when you and Follow Ba debuted on Impact, I I definitely wanted to see more of you guys together because I'm sure you heard this a lot, but you guys, you kind of had that Owen Hart Yokozuna look, and I feel like yes. we didn't get to see enough of you guys. Um, can you kind of explain like what what happened? Um, yeah, I mean when we when we first got to Impact, it was um, Jeff Jarrett had just taken over again and. And Abyss, and uh, that was we got the call from Abyss to come down. They were it was right when the Hardys were were there, right before they went back to wrestle when they when they showed up at WrestleMania. Yes, it was right before then, and they were bringing in. Apparently, they were going to bring in like all these tag teams, and they were going to have the Hardys. I feel like I think they were going to have the Hardys like defeat and uh, all the champions. Like we were supposed to drop the Monster Factory tag titles to the Hardys. That was the original plan. Mm -hmm. um and then the hardys were gone and then we talked with uh abyss and they were like still come down you know because we were like are we still going to come down like this was the plan but we were told you know like and they're like yeah yeah still come down and everything because we knew we met jeff from global force when he came and worked with us at pws russell pro um um nick aldis was there too he had come down and worked with us in one of the matches there and um jeff was just such an awesome guy and he really gave so much opportunity to so many people when global force came around and even before when he started tna i mean like he was just like he's just one of the nicest per people in wrestling and most like giving person like i've ever met like i was like i was just it was i i had watched jeff jower growing up like we were saying by him and Shawn michaels for an intercontinental title like one of the you know that's an also like one of my top 10 intercontinental title matches like of all time you know like it was, and working with him was just awesome you know like just bringing us in and um we were just i think they didn't really know a lot of things were kind of still being changed you know at the time mm -hmm. and i yeah. feel like funds were were it was trying to make sure that the company was generating revenue and not hemorrhaging it at the time Mm -hmm. So we kind of like were everybody liked what we were doing and they were kind of not too sure what they wanted to do with it. So it was just a matter of finding um, the right storyline for us. And we did a house show. We worked with LAX and we had a really, really good match with LAX who are I mean, anybody can have a good match with LAX because they're incredible. Um, Santana and Ortiz, and I'm so happy to watch, see what they're doing now in AEW with Chris Jericho and the Inner Circle and everybody. Like that's awesome. It's so great because those guys worked so hard to get where they are. You know what's funny? Um, I mean, like I don't mean to cut you off, but when you look at like, no. Shawn Michaels and Chris and uh, Chris Jericho, I'm sorry, Jeff Jarrett, the Intercontinental Title, which they just did the watch along, and Jeff Jarrett with the Global Force Wrestling like vision that you had. I mean, you saw guys like Kurt Hawkins who created Pro, which I'm sure we'll get to in a yeah. second here. Uh, Bobby Roode, the now Killer Cross, who is now a part of the NXT brand. I mean, there's so many people yeah. that really came there. Uh, Gallows and Anderson. You had a list of crop of town on the GFW roster, and then what we saw with Impact with yourself and Fala Ba. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, Jer like I said, Jeff was just like, you know, like he had a great eye, you know, for talent. And he just like, you know, it was just I was just thankful to be part of it. You know, that like, he came and they'd seen something and there wasn't, you know, like anybody who was Croatian, literally anybody on, you know. And I know now, I mean, like, you know, the, like in NXT, there's uh, Dominic Dijakovic. Yes. But at the same time, too, I don't know how much heritage he has in him as far as i know it's not a lot <laughs> but from what i understand you know it's you know there might be a piece in there i'm not sure but he's a great guy he's an incredible worker i'm not taking anything away from him it's just i feel like too for me i felt like at the time it was when world cup was big croatia was in the finals and i feel like maybe wrestling was like hey we need a croatian guy and i wasn't really active at the time and you know i'm I'm also not six foot four and you know <laughs> so <laughs> sure you know it's um 
I feel like they might think, you know, it might be easy to add a, a VIC at the end of somebody's name, but at the same time, too, if you're not pronouncing it correctly, it's like, you know, it kind of can go the way it goes. But, um, you know, I'm really happy for, it's great that, you know, it's it's getting out there that, you know, and there's uh, another guy, Chris, Chris Jokic, that I met in Croatia, and he's one of the only other guys that, I mean, he's like straight up full born and raised in Croatia, like Zadar, like, so I'm hoping one day I can, you know, something good comes through for him, you know, because he's, he's a, he's like the first full grown Croatian wrestler that I know of. So, um, and he's an, he's an incredible talent too. So I worked with him this past year. I had my last match in Hungary and, um, which was a big bucket list for me to do anyway. So it was just to wrestle overseas, but uh, I hope one day something great happens for him because he works really hard and he's, we're trying to bring, trying to help him bring wrestling to Croatia, which would be awesome. I think what's cool for you too is like, you've gotten to work with like OVW guys like Deuce and Domino and Cody Rhodes. So I saw your match with him and Leo Rush, like in 2017, I believe this is right when Cody was just like, yeah. getting on to the Indies. So, I mean, like you've got to work with that again, that crop like Deuce and Domino. I mean, you did some WWE talent as well. Simon Dean, Rob Conway, Velocity and Heat respectively. I mean, around right. that particular time period, you had Simon Dean who would then go on to be talent relations and you had Rob yeah. Conway, the con man. I mean, dude, that's a list right there. Yeah, I mean, I, that was right before I had gone down to try to go to some. I went to OVW camps and learned. It was Jim Cornette was down there for the camp, the trial camps, and then Rip Rogers. And then um, I had gone to one, and they had said that uh, you have a lot of good potential, but you know, we think you know you need to work on a couple of things. You know, you got to work. You know, every body, everything. They said you need a little bit of work on everything, but you got a good base. I was like, okay. So I went back and I worked on everything and I came back a year later and I did the trial camp again. And Rip, Rip was, Rip Rogers said, well, you worked. He said, well, you, you, you got better at everything that we asked you to get better at. He's like, but your body still sucks. <laughs> you know, like, but he's like, but you got, you got better. So, and him and Danny Davis were kind of like, Hey, it's, I think it's a good opportunity for you to come down. You know, you I feel like you can, you know, you, you, you benefit, they're not guaranteeing anything, but you know, and, um, so I, that was when I kind of packed my, my stuff and went down and we went right into the uh, intermediate class with Rip. And I learned more from Rip Rogers in one year than I learned in six years on the independence before that from anybody else. So Rip, Rip, Rip Rogers, like completely made me look at everything differently, like everything, like just life and maturity and everything different i owe a lot too to, to rip rogers because he's he i always tell everybody he he, he would say too like you watch t you know you look at wrestling like in black and white like you're watching a black and white tv set and eventually one day the channel changes and all of a sudden it's in color and it's in high definition and it's like and he's the guy that changed that channel for me like made me look at everything a whole different way and but even being being down there too with like when uh, paul Heyman was down there mm-hmm. Um, CM Punk was down there. The Miz was down there. That was like when you first saw the Miz go from he was a baby face, and when he when they had him turn heel, you were like, dude, this guy is going to be a star. Like mm-hmm. when you saw him work heel, I was like, oh man. Oh man. <laughs> you know what's funny about that too? It's like yeah. what, when he did like UPW and he did OVW, like the dude comes out, he's coming off the million dollar tough enough, he's doing the hoorah, he's got the faux hawk, he's beaten Tatanka on Friday Night SmackDown. Then you just see that heel and how he, you know, came into his own with Morrison. I mean, that dude has grown le- leaps and bounds since 06, since the OVW and UPW runs. That's a guy from heel work, might work. The dude has it. Oh, yeah. It was like, I mean, he was still getting, he, and he was still super, super nice. I mean, like I was coaching the beginners class at the beginning of 2006 because mm-hmm. I went down in 2005 and I was in the intermediate class. And then eventually in 2006, uh, Mike Mondo was coaching the beginners class uh, right before he went up with the spirit squad and Seth Skyfire was oh. also another. Yeah, Seth was, was he, awesome. Wasn't he with Chet the Jet, Chet Jablonski, right? One of those? Yes. Yes. Yep, Chet the Jet. Yes, he was. He was down there, too. Um, and they were, he was coaching the beginner's class as well. And another guy, Russell Simpson, oh, was yes. coaching the beginner's class. And then finally, they, Rip was like, would you want to do it? You know, I was like, yeah. It's like, of course. So it was like, that was like awesome to get to do that. So it was like, and that was like a big 
um, you know, like that was I, that to me that was a big compliment. You know, that they, you know, like it was so funny because it was like if people got signed, uh, they would bring them, you know, to like the beginners class if they didn't know anything about wrestling, and it's like the guy coaching the beginners class doesn't work for <laughs> doesn't work for the, for the company. But if you get signed, <laughs> you come to my class. It's like you know, like, it was just funny, but you know, like it was great. The whole the whole thing was great. Uh, some of my favorite memories was being in OVW. I mean, and you had like Bobby Lashley and you had Jillian Hall. You yeah. had so many people. Yeah. There. Derek Nykirk. I mean, Dean Viss, Dean Jablonski, the whole night, everybody. Was yeah. Brent Albright. Beth Phoenix. Yes. Beth Phoenix. We saw her like this. We, she did a run in one, on one show mm-hmm. and it was like the second the camera went to her just running to the ring. Like everybody just popped. Like we're all like, holy hell. Like, look at this. Like Jesus. Like she looked like, just she was coming for 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 your head you know like and she looked awesome running to the ring and like it was just like that was like you knew too like even cody like when cody first walked out with his first match against pat buck we were like there's no way this guy hasn't done this before you know (laughs) because you're like but you know i mean it's like just the second it's like you just you could see it was like when people would come out you know and then like we said with like miz it was like second you saw him more kill you were like dude I think you know, last CM, CM Punk too. Yeah. It's like it's just crazy. I think the last thing I'll add to that, just going back to your Beth Phoenix for some man, her and Katie Lee Virtual, I remember had a kick ass ladder match for OVW. Oh yeah. Yeah, Beth was awesome and she's just a great person too. Like it was she was another one everybody was like we were down there with too, like uh Santino Morella. I mean he was he was a really good friend of mine too down there and they they it was great to see, you know, where he'd gone to. Serena Deeb. When she was in the Straight Edge Society, yep. she was down there with us. Um, you know, like it was a lot of people down there when when I was there in two thousand five and six. It was it was really a, like a, a crazy time to see how, where how many people came up. Like I said, Bobby Lashley was the another guy that would be coming around and he'd be picking up garbage with us at the end of the show, like the beginners guys. Like you know, like he, he was Bobby Lashley. You know, and he would come help us clean up the arena. Like that was just the type of person that he was. Like you could just, you know, like he didn't have to do that. You, you, know, you know, you know what it is too. Like around this time, I'll be honest with you. Watching No Mercy 2005, Bobby Lashley, Simon Dean, he's feeding him the cheeseburgers, Simon System, and I said to myself as a 13, I'm like, no way would I see this man, world champion, you know, MMA fighter, and just look at the career that Bobby Lashley has had. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, you know, <clears throat> like it's it's crazy. A lot yeah, of there was. Too. There was a big improvement, like when I saw Bobby Lashley's WWE run, and then his first TNA run, and then he was kind of like, I don't know, it seemed like he was out of wrestling for a little bit, or at least mm-hmm. he wasn't really on a TV. And then he kind of came back to a TNA, and all of a sudden he was just like ten times better than he was before. He just really learned. I don't know what he did in that time frame, but he came yeah, back I mean, a lot better. Yeah, when we got down to Impact with, with me and Fala, it was like. He was one of the guys too that was. I mean, like a lot of the guys were really great with you know with us. Most of you know, like I, really everybody was really cool. You know, as far as just you know everybody being very opening and warm and responsive, and the locker room was really cool. It was, I think it just at the time too. It was like nobody really knew what was going on. There was still a lot of changing of the guards. Nobody really knew who was in charge. Um, you know, and people were were not really too sure what was going on. So, you know, we were originally when we were going back to Impact, what you guys were asking about what kind of happened with us too was my father and myself worked with LAX, and then after that, Jeff was like, "I think we're going to turn you guys babyface," because that's what we were. We were babyface anyway in Monster Factory, and we were always just follow is like just a big child, and you know, like which is you know like, and he's one of my best you know friends through wrestling, and he's just like. He's just, he's always out there just having fun and he's always trying to crack people up or make people laugh or do silly things. And I was always a little more serious about stuff and um, he kind of lightened me up a lot, you know, and we just had a lot of fun together and um, they were going to turn us baby face. And we were like, yes, like, please, you know, like, please turn us baby face. Mm-hmm. And then at the August last taping in August, I ended up tweaking my meniscus in a match with, um, Alberto Del Rio's brother. I forget what his name. I'm. I can't. Oh, I feel horrible like, about what the name is. Oh, Dos Caras Jr. One of the Dos Caras. Yes. 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 Um, it was his brother, and we we were gonna ha- we were supposed to work, and then they were the match was gonna happen, then it wasn't gonna happen, then it was gonna happen, and then it wasn't gonna happen. 
So we were in and out of the studio and it was hot outside and it was cold inside and it was hot outside. So like it was, you weren't really able to properly stretch at the time. Then we finally had the match and like, it was like during the first minute of chaining, I felt something in my knee go. And then eventually it was like uh, two months later, it, I just went and practiced. And then that was, that was where I pretty much was gone. And I didn't really hear anything back from impact. Um, they were changing a lot of things. A lot of things were changing. Scott Demore was in charge then. Um, and it was just, it was just kind of bad timing, bad, you know, like it was just kind of the way things rolled, <laughs> yeah. rolled for me at times. A lot of the times I was, how I left OVW was I tore my ACL. So injuries and injuries and just timing have been, uh, plagued a lot of my, my time in wrestling so it's you know but I eventually I you know I guess you try to look at it as everything happens for a reason you know so you just try to look at it on the bright side I, I mean if I never went down to impact I would have never met Jennifer who who I'm with now um in Tampa and I've known her I met her she was a she worked with one of the gear makers uh, as a seamstress for impact and um I mean I she's like a blessing for me so it was like I look at it as all those things. If I never would have made it there, and if if Danny Cage would have never called me to come down to Monster Factory to work with Punisher Martinez, who's now um, Damian Priest. Damian Priest, you know, like I would have never even found Abyss, who would have found us and Fala, and who would have brought us in, and we wouldn't have been an impact. And three years later, I'm 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 here in Tampa living with her, you know. So it's yeah. like. It's just amazing how the circle of life works. <laughs> not to get, not you know, like if, if, if this one little thing didn't happen, you would, you know, like it's amazing. I mean, just, not to get to too, how. not to get too spiritual on you guys, but I mean, no. we, God bless first and foremost to you and your wife, love and happiness. Uh, with right. you, oh, well, we're not, we're not married, but we're together. We're, you know, but we're, oh, you know, well, love and happiness regardless. Hopefully exactly. one day. Sure. Yes. <laughs> but no. I already call her my wife, but it's all good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. But no, man, I mean, I look at it like this when two souls, you know, intertwine and, you know, and the whole nine there, I mean, of life happens and everything happens for a reason in this thing here that we call life and i mean you had your matches with um ove you had your matches with the veterans of war and throughout your career throughout your tenure i mean it's amazing just to see your progression yeah i mean it's crazy to see how things have gone and a lot of times those injuries and those little things ended up changing the way i would work when i got back and change a lot of stuff and some people would tell me they were like they're like everything you do now is, is just has so much more meaning or you don't or you don't do it and I'm like, well, a lot of the times you have to slow down because you physically can't go any faster than, <laughs> than that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I had to learn to slow down. I mean, at this point now, I've had both of my ACLs are replaced. Um, I had four discs in my neck that were herniated, two in my neck, two in my back. Um, I missed like a good year and a half because of, uh, I had five epidurals in my spine. I have half a bicep on my right arm right now. Um, I mean, just so many, <laughs> so many, so many injuries that are, you know, that I've worked through and I kept working through now. It's like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm 39 now. I'm going to be 40 at the end of this year. So I've started in February, 2000. So, um, I don't, I don't feel like I'm where I wanted to end up. I don't, I don't feel like I'm finished yet, but at the same time too, I'm not sure how much more I can physically take. So I would love to. It's just a matter of, you know, right now, the last year that I had was a lot of ups and downs with injuries as well. Uh, I, took, I took a couple of good shots that I had over the course of a few months of last year and um, really kind of had to make me s step back a little bit and, you know, just pump the brakes and be like, look, dude, like there's life after 40. You know, like what kind of quality of life are you going to have if you keep going the way you're going? You know, so sure. Sure. It's, it's I mean, it's hard, it's hard, but at the same time, it's like, you know, uh, the door's not shut. Nothing's over. It's just a matter of right now. It's everything is kind of like I'm still figuring a lot of things out. So, and uh, I mean, you you had a um, a match on one of Impact's Twitch events not long ago. And I think it was uh, in, in conjunction with Wrestle Pro, I believe. Yes. Mm hmm. So I did, I did, I think that was the last time I did see you at least on like the impact side of things. Yeah. Yeah. That was the last time I was, I was working there with impact. I believe it was 
it was a triple threat match. Yes, yes. Yeah, with yep. Chris Payne and Christopher A.B. Kuehling. Yes. So that yep. was the last, yeah, that was the last time I'd had a match I had on uh, Twitch or for Impact it was. Um, and that was another one, too, where I felt like, you know, I probably, a lot of the times I was a little more giving than I should have been at times, where, like, sometimes you need to, it's, it's a hard thing because sometimes you want to help other guys so much you end up not shining yourself up as much as you probably should. You sure. Know? So a lot of the times are, you know, I think there was things like that too. And, you know, it's just, you look back on them and you're like, I probably could have did a little better to my, for myself <laughs> <laughs> on some things. I have a lot of matches where I felt like I did that, but you know, coaching was, was a, is a big thing. I, I love doing I coach. I've been coaching for 13 years. So, over the course between Ace, uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling, and with WrestlePro. So I was there for six years coaching alongside with Pat Buck as one of the assistant coaches. And now um, Sean Donovan and Danny Moff take, took, have taken over, and also Bobby Wayward, so, who was a guy that started from scratch with PWS. And now he's, you know, one of the head trainers. So, you know, it's great to see, like, those guys step up and, um, you know, and take, take the reins. You know, when because a lot of times, too, with wrestling, it's, you know, there's a lot of things that happen, you know, in life that happen for guys that, you know, are not really publicly known. And at the same time, too, it's, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge social media guy, as you probably should be, especially in wrestling. You know, you're supposed to be pu pushing yourself or promoting yourself or being active on social media. And I'm not as active as I probably should be. But at the same time, too, it's like, you know, it's just it's it's a hard it's hard to balance real life with, you know, what social media life looks like, because they're not they're not they're two different things a lot of the times. Sure. And I, I wanted to get your opinion. A lot of wrestlers now will break kayfabe on social media. I kind of wanted to get your opinion. Like, do you think it's do you believe in the old school way where it should just kind of be, you know, play character all the time? Or do you believe it should be just it's 2020 we should kind of learn to adapt i mean it's 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 hard because it's a different you know like i feel like you'll you'll you can ask 10 different people that same question and you're going to get 10 different answers you know of a different way but a lot of the times it's it's so funny because some people like for me like people when they met me they thought that i had an accent people people thought that i talked that that way you know and the Croatian character of me on TV and whatever character I played, it was ultimately, it was just an impersonation of my father because my father talks that way. Like that's how my father sounds. <laughs> so, when I, you know what I mean? Like that was, it was basically just my father with the volume turned way up. You know what I mean? Like which they're always saying, you should try to find yourself and turn the volume way up on it. And that was kind of where I got like the character from. So it was like, you know, I knew that I've known that character. So it was like, that just that's just what it was and it was so weird because people would when they would find out that i didn't really talk that way they would get mad so it's like in a world where everybody knows that it's a work they're upset when something is not real which doesn't make any sense to me at all sometimes you know what i mean like it's just like it's weird but now that with social media and they want they want more reality based television and it's i think everybody knows now too like because social media is so it's so open and so active and a lot of guys they'll 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 make it where you blur the lines where they're not too sure and whenever you can blur the lines that's what draws people in no matter what mm -hmm. it is you know whenever they could whenever they question it now you got it whether it's it, it's real or not, when they when they don't know, that's when people are interested, or when they're questioning it. So I think it can go both ways. It just depends on like, it depends on the person and the storyline. It's right place, right time, right circumstances. Like when injuries happen to and people play off them, it's like that's reality based TV. You can't write that. You know, like with when Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan, when Eddie got hurt with his eye with the baseball bat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it was a perfect example of the blurred line, you know, like and now it was that helped both guys 
now now it was everybody's talking about it whether it's good or bad everybody's talking about it you know i we used to get a lot of flack sometimes from from other um the other half of pws for not being in character and it was hard because everybody's like well everybody knows though so you know like it was just it's a very fine it's a it's just a hard line to to you know to go on but i feel like just the fans in general want they want more reality based tv but again like i said it's like it's all circumstance it's just right right place right time you know it, it all depends on the storyline and the person but it can go either way it really can especially in nowadays yeah i mean and then you mentioned it i mean you know sammy he, he's one of those guys that pretty much sticks to character on social media and I, I think that's what I kind of really like about him. And I, right. I have nothing against, you know, pro wrestlers that want to, you know, talk whatever. But Sammy, like, really sticks to it. And and, and Eddie Edwards coming out of that storyline, he, he developed a new character, too. So it's like right. it really kind of put them in a new stratosphere. Yeah, I mean, it's like you just take – those are things you can't write. You know, like they, nobody wrote that. That was just – it's it's natural. And that's when, when they say – what is it uh, – What's that saying when reality, you know, art? It's art imitating life. Yes, yes, exactly. That, that's exactly what it becomes when art, art imitates life. That, that's what everybody wants because it's that question mark. It's when the, because the fan, a lot of the fans, they all, like, I'm the same way when I watch. Like, I want to, I want to not predict it. Like, a lot of the times I'd watch wrestling with my friends or other guys or people, you know, people that weren't in, in the business and we'd be watching shows and they'd be like, it's over. And I'm like, no, it's not. And then he'd kick out and they'd look at me and they're like, and I'm like, what? You know, and then <laughs> something would happen and I'm like, ball game. And they were like, one, two, three. And they're like, how do you know? How do you know? And I'm like, it's just, it's, you know, I don't know. You know, like, it's just like, psychology. I know. So people would not, yeah, nobody want to watch wrestling with me because I would ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but even now it's like, you, you know, we still, we all want to, we all want to not, I don't want to be able to predict it. You know, I don't like knowing the outcome of a match before I watch it. Like, if, you know, like I won't go on social media if I, if I want to watch a pay-per-view. If I, if I can't watch a pay-per-view, I, I, I'll be off social media for two days until I can watch it. I, I think I don't want to, I don't want to know that. I don't want to know who wins because it takes away from the match. I think it's kind of like to quote Denzel Washington in the 2001 film training day, this shit's chess. It ain't checka. So, I mean, when you're just, yeah. you just want to watch the psychology of a match and I know yeah. people not watching want to watch wrestling with you. Cause how do you know? But I mean, that's still cool, man. Cause you can tell by the psychology and the moves it's, that's on the chessboard. You know what I'm saying? You're just making yeah. these moves. Yeah. It's like, as you're watching, you're just like, I don't, you know, like, I love being able to be surprised. That's why a lot of times too, I'll stay off social media. Like even just like, the, like this year's past Rumble, when Edge came back, dude, like goosebumps, mm -hmm. like goosebumps, crazy, like that, like gave me hope. You know what I mean? Like you know, like for a guy like me, that's hope. I mean, you know? and Edge was one of my all times. Like he's one of my, you know, top guys. Like. There's a select handful of guys, you know, and he's one of them. And you're like, I was so happy to get to see that. Like, just because he, he was always great about being able to, you could feel the emotion come out of him. And that's really what the business is about is, is, is transferring emotion through action on, on television. Like it's a live choreographed fight scene. And that's usually what I would try to tell students is we're theater in the round, like old school Shakespeare. You know, like it's theater in the round and it's live choreographed fight scenes. And that's what we're doing. And it's telling a story of good versus evil, character versus character. What happens when, when the Joker meets Batman? What happens when your character meets Superman meets Batman? What happens when this character meets that character? I don't care about what physically happens, but what's going to happen when when they when they meet, and that's like what it's about. I've always create. I've always said too, it's it's Rocky and Apollo Creed. Every fight is Rocky, you know. And I've heard Triple H say that as well. And I've told guys like I always thought that to me wrestling was Rocky Balboa. It was always Rocky and Apollo, or Rocky and Ivan Drago, or Rocky and Clever Lang. 
and I took half of my character from Clubber Lang and Ivan Drago. I used to love Clubber Lang as far as his intensity and his robes and his gear, and but the the power and the and the nationality of Ivan Drago was like so. I kind of took both of those and combined them. So what if he's just Croatian <laughs> instead of Russian? You know, <laughs> but that was kind of like two of my big inspirations for the heel character for the character was was through those two movies. You know, too. So it's like they always say it's like trying to find a character and you know you know, put it together. It's like, that was just like, it's all character stories. It's, you know, I mean, they ask you, what's the prediction of the fight pain. So yeah. I yeah. Mean, I mean, like I loved it. It's like, yeah, it's like, there were so many good things, you know, like and that was Hulk Hogan was in Rocky three. So that was like back, you know, like under lips is in here in the flesh. Baby. Yeah. You know, like that was the stuff, man. That was the shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I guess like what I mean, there's so many wrestling companies right now, especially ones that have TV deals. What's kind of your plan of attack going in the next few years, even well, 2020? I mean, that was too. I've been, I was been talking with the misses about a plan. I'm like, I really need to get a plan of action together, you know. And uh, I recently just had a lot of MRI stuff done, and I had. Um, you know, or VNG and the EEG done on brain function and things like that to make sure everything is um, working well. Um, I mean, honestly, too, last year uh, I was diagnosed as bipolar. So I've been dealing with bipolar um, issues, taking medication for that. Um, so this is like the first time I've said this to anybody, like publicly. So. Um, but I'm not ashamed of it. It's just, it was something that people were like, well, maybe you really don't want to tell people that stuff. And I'm like, it's, it's, it's real, real life situations like, like depression, anxiety, um, you know, um, self doubt, self consciousness, like those are things that can happen to anybody. And that does happen to normal people on a regular basis. Like just because I get in the ring and wrestle doesn't mean that I don't have other life problems, you know, like other people do. And it's one of those things, like, I honestly, like, I don't even, like, wish that on my worst enemy sometimes because it's really hard dealing with those things. Um, and wrestling is such a, a business that you're filled with critique all the time. Um, mm. You're constantly being judged on every single thing that you do by people, strangers, everything. You know, like, you hear some horrible things called to you or, or said to you while you're in the ring, you know? And it's like, we always said it's, you know, you got to have tough skin in this business to, to make it. But, you know, um, <clears throat> but I really wanted to, for me, it was like, I just dealing with all that stuff. Like I want, I want to get as healthy and make sure everything is good moving forward. You know, for me, I really, I, I still want, I, I don't feel like I reached that finish line yet of where I wanted to go or get mm -hmm. to. I mean, I always saw myself, you know, like WrestleMania was always everybody's goal. I think when you begin to, you know, when you step foot in the ring for the first time, it, WrestleMania is your, it should be, you know, like that's where you want to be the champ, you know, like at the same time, it's like, if you're not, if you don't want to be that, then why are you here? You know, if you don't want to be there, then what are you doing? You know, like you should want to be the best. You always want to be the best or be it, go as far as you can, you know? And it's hard because I feel like I've let maybe myself down or other people down, but you know, at the same time, it's, you can't, you know, there's things that happen, injuries. And there's a lot of people that there's a lot of people I know that deserve to be, you know, in a certain spot or in a certain position, a certain place, but they're not because of circumstances or injuries or things like that. So my ultimate, my ultimate goal and dream right now would be to be able to get physically healthy again and, you know, remain active and, you know, hopefully one day be able to, to be, you know, in, in WWE or AEW, whether it be in the, you know, at this point I would take a referee's job, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. Just to be in any, any form of it, you know, if, 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 I, if I get the opportunity to coach, I would love to do that as well because coaching has always been a huge, you know. I mean, I, t I spoke to you guys before about it, but you know, at this point, you know, I'm 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 a very open person, 
like just all the time. I can talk about, I love talking about wrestling. Like, so I'm so, I'm glad, I'm so happy that you guys even asked me to do this. And I'm sorry if I ramble. Oh, no, dude, don't even worry. (laughs) Dude, don't worry about it. I mean, if you look from the referee standpoint, look at Nunzio. Little Guido was a ref for a little bit in WWE. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, James. Yeah, he's awesome. He's another guy from up north. So, I mean, you know, like I'm just, you know, and not not having wrestling for so long, and like even with Impact, feeling like you were so close, and then having it taken away, like it sucks. I'm not gonna lie, like it sucks. Like Impact really, it sucked for me. It was hard. It was hard watching Fala and Kevin Matthews, you know, and I love them both dearly. It's just it was hard to sit home and watch these guys, you know, like your friends there and you're just like i should be there <laughs> you know with them or i was right i was right there you know like what happened well i think you know, how really... did i how did i get here you know well, and dude... it's hard to climb back out well mario i think you're an asset in your own right like coaching like you mentioned russ i always say create a pro even on long island hicksville i mean with yeah. hawkins cpa uh, max caster francis kiplin stevens now evil kip i mean you're still doing your thing and you you're an asset to coaching these young kids and yourself just applying your craft in your own right yeah i mean and it's like you know having that for me was like you know it's like that was even more rewarding sometimes than you know wrestling itself was watching someone that you know you helped along and, and do something, you know, great now, or just attain, attain a goal that they wanted to attain, you know, like, and especially since the last few months being hurt and, you know, I was planning on moving and things that, you know, you know, life situations and home situations and things with my family. Like I had to really step back a little bit last year from a lot of stuff from coaching too, just to get some things put together. Cause I had, I had ran hard for like 19 years. Like everything was about wrestling. Like all my money went into wrestling. All my time went into wrestling, went into the gym, went into my body, went into working on, you know, myself, went into the character, went into, you know, whatever I could, everything was always wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. And it cost me a lot of relationships, friendships, good jobs, you know, like a lot of things. Um, And, but that was the life I chose. I always, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, well, I didn't care about money. I just, I always wanted to be a professional wrestler. Like that was all I ever wanted, you know, like, and it was just, I mean, even when I was like five years in, I had an opportunity, um, as a ref, when you guys were talking about Rob Conway and Simon Dean, right after I had had those positions, um, you know, I had worked with Rob Conway and, I originally got the opportunity because Sergeant Slaughter had seen a cage match that I had at ECPW and he told me he had really enjoyed it and spoke very highly of it. And, um, we got to go do some things and Tommy dreamer was head of talent relations then. And he was like, I think they're going to offer you something. And, um, they offered me a job as a referee and it was just shocking to me because I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I said I had always wanted to be a wrestler and I was like five years in, you know, I'm like 24, I'm young, I'm healthy, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, right. And, and um, I didn't say yes right away. So because I didn't say yes, I said no in the retrospect. So it was like just a weird, you know, like position. And they were like, I was already planning on moving down to OVW anyway. Cause I just got into the being, but you know, I just passed, passed the, the, into the tryout, you know? So it was like, they knew I was moving down there already. So it was like, well, if you're already moving down there, then why am I going to pay you to move down there? You know, like, so it was just, that's one of those circumstances that kind of like looking back on it now, like, for a lot of the times I look back on that and I kind of kicked myself, but I didn't know any better. And I didn't, you know, now you see the referees now and they were, a lot of guys were ex workers, you know, like Bandito, uh, Bandito Jr. Now he's a referee, uh, Dan, um, referee. I can't even say his last name and, and Phoebe and, and Phoebe, no, Dan, mm-hmm. he was another, he, Sean Bennett refereeing now too. Like a lot of the referees that Drake younger. Now, some, 
Yes, yes. Drake Young is a perfect example. Like, Jessica Carr. You know what I mean? Like, yes, Jessica. Yeah, and I'm so happy for her too because she was always awesome, like such an awesome person, and she was always a really good worker. And I always told her, I'm like, you just have so much character. Like when you work, it's just like it's so great to see how far she's come to. Like, oh yeah, dude, Jesse K, MCW. Hell yeah, on. yeah, man, Jesse K was awesome. It's like great to see. You know, it's great to see so many people that you've seen grow up. You know, grow through wrestling, getting to do that, and it's really hard too. Just like I said, just still like, you know, you feel like you're on the outside looking in a lot of the times. But you know, life happens for a reason. Everything happens for for a reason. You know, I still just want to be a part of it some some way somehow. You know, I always wanted to just make a living through it, and hopefully. Hopefully, I, I, I can still. You know, like that's the ultimate dream. So it was just to be able to. Well, you know, I mean, support a family through it, and not you know be able to do what you love, and still be able to support support your family. You know. Yeah. No. I mean, I. Do, I mean, that quick time you were in Impact, I thought you had a great look. I thought, you know, you and Fala had something really cool, and I. I, I think we barely got to see you, and I. I'd, I'd hope any company would pick you up because I, I. I was definitely impressed from the from the short time you were there. I thought, um, I, it's too bad that Impact didn't offer you a contract after that or you know a long-term deal but yeah. i think any company that would you know ring of honor mlw i think you you'd you'd make a perfect fit there thank you man yeah i, I really appreciate it yeah when we were there with impact they were um it was one-year deals and it was a lot of um automatic renewal basis and there, there was just a lot of things because it was just so it, it was just so many things that were changing you know at the time and it was just um you know, it really wasn't it, originally they were, as far as I knew, they were automatic renewal, one year contracts with automatic renewal, unless, unless one party opts out with a 30 day written notice and nobody, nobody gave anybody any written notice. I never got one. <laughs> they never, I never gave them one and they never gave me one. So as far as I was concerned, I thought I was still under contract, but eventually you just stop hearing from people and you kind of get the point. So you're like, okay. You know, like, but a lot of things have changed since, you know, from three years yeah. ago. So, you know, I mean, I'm happy that they're, that they're, I'm happy that they're doing well. I mean, I'm happy for, I'm happy that there's so many places to work and I'm, you know, like, cause they were, everybody was always saying that, you know, like you didn't want to, you, you know, if one place closes, it's, it's less jobs for everybody in the business. So it's like, you should want everybody to thrive. You know, you want every company to do well. Cause this is just more opportunities and more jobs for everybody. So it's like, you know, you never wish ill on anybody or any, or any company or anything like that. You know, it's just, it's circumstances. It's just business. It's just the way the business works, you know, and it's, it's hard and it sucks at times. And it is, you know, a lot of times, I mean, leaving, leaving wrestle pro coming down here, I, you know, it's my last show there was from the curtain. You know, I didn't get to, you know, it was great seeing like Moff and Pat and a lot of guys get to have a real like send off, you know, and right. I didn't really get to do that because I was injured, you know, and it was just in circumstances. And, you know, one of one of my students was really, you know, they looked at me and they were just like, it's not fair. And I'm like, life's not fair, babe. <laughs> so if life was fair we'd all we'd all get everything we wanted but it doesn't work that way you know i said but you know i said but i it doesn't change what i've done it doesn't change who i've helped you know i'll always know that and they know that too you know like everybody doesn't always get a happy ending it doesn't always you know you don't always get that that glory day in the hot sun but you know like it's just you never know what tomorrow holds either like I said, you just got to keep on going. So you, yeah. like guys like guys like Edge and things like that are just like that's hope, you know. Right. And see guys that are older and they're coming around, and you know, guys like Chris Jericho, you know, for me, yeah. like a guy, a guy like Dan Moff, you know, like yeah, yeah, you know, he just like, got signed to Ring of Honor. Yeah, yeah, you know, and Danny is long overdue, long yeah. overdue. You know, I mean, heck, Pete. PCO, he's the champion right now in Ring of Honor. Exactly. So, Look, that's what I'm saying. Know? Like, dude, like, look at it. Like, you know, like, there's no, there's no age limit. Because I used to get told all the time that I was too old when I was in my late 30s. 
35, 36. Everyone's like, you're too old. Fuck you. Yeah. Well, that's the thing now. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 well, if PCO is 51 years old, it could be the Ring of Honor champion. Well, then, hello. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, exactly. Like, who's who's to say any, you know? I met Bill DeMott, who I thought was really a really great guy. He really was when I went down to the Monster Factory and met with Bill DeMott. And I really, I loved him, like, from the first day that I talked to him. I just thought he was a great guy. Um there had might have been stuff, you know. I, I don't know. There's so many things in wrestling with so many people that people talk bad stuff about a lot of people. Like, I was, <laughs> I always used to joke around, and I'm like, I'm like an old car. I don't got any heat, you know. Like, <laughs> I don't want heat with no, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, I have no heat, but no, you know. Like that's it. Like I, you know, I treated people the way they treated me. So if they were good to me, then I was good. To, you know, like that's all I knew. So I can't, you know, I couldn't speak for people about anything or anybody but everybody's always been just super nice to me because i've just been that way i don't know it's a it's a hard business too to it's intimidating a lot of times when you walk into locker rooms or different places and you know they want you supposed to you're supposed to mingle and you're supposed to talk to people but a lot of times people look at you like who the fuck are you and why are you talking to me right you know like it's it's just (laughs) it's a hard business to you know get around in sometimes but you know it's you have to be a people person and it's you know it's just those there's those, those fine lines of yeah of you know i mean we, we had we had homicide on last time and he was telling us <laughs> some interesting stories about you know meeting different wrestlers and you know for the first time it's just yeah. like there's that unwritten code you know and you just don't you're kind of walking on eggshells almost sometimes yeah a lot of the times and that was like you know i felt that same way with you know like just with impact too in general it was like you know i was a lot more you know and they were very it was a very comfortable locker room like like guys like james storm was just awesome like just such a cool guy like to sit and talk with us and nick aldis too like eli drake ec3 like all those guys were really like you know, everybody, everybody had t- come up to us, and even a lot of the producers and other guys, too, that they came up to with myself and Fala, and they were like, you guys are good, dude. Like, you guys are good. Like, you know, like, we like your shit. Like, you guys are cool, you know, like, and you fit. And everybody was like, everybody wanted to see us do well, and everybody wanted to see us get pushed or do something well, you know, and then when someone comes up to you and tells you that you're going to be the power and glory of impact, that you might get a win on a house show here and there, but you're basically just here to put people over. Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of like, you know, it, you're like, it's great to be in in the business in general. You know, like it's an honor to be in the business in general. But at the same time, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. But at the same time, it kind of does. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's such, yeah. there's, it's just it's just it's an awkward. It's another one of those awkward fine line eggshell things. Like, and it's just it's so weird. Like like for me and being a, carrying the Croatian flag on on national television, like and being the first guy to do that, and then you you have you're not going to win a match though. Like the country is not going to get behind you. The country is not very proud of that. <laughs> Right. You know what right. I mean? Like, so it's very hard to, you know, like, it's just, you know, you, you just want to know that if you start if you start a job, any job, you don't want to go start that job. And, and they're like, OK, basically, this is as far as you're going to go. You know what I mean? Like, right. if you started, you know, a new job or a job that you really wanted to. And you just finally you finally get that job. And they're like, OK, there's a there's you're only going to. You're only going to get it promoted once. That's it. You know, like you're not going to make a manager. You're not going to make district manager. You're not going to make regional manager. You'll be lucky if you can manage yourself. You know, like it's just like that ceiling's been put on you. I just, I don't understand. I would just kind of, I would never, I don't know. If I, if I was a promoter, I would never, you know, put that on anyone. I would kind of take it how it, go, how it goes. I, I, I would look at every you know, every month I'd look at it differently. So exactly. Like, how can you, know, you say that? How can you tell somebody that and expect them, you know, like to not take that the wrong way or not take that off- offensively, you know, or not like, you know, and there's, there's things that, you know, I'm, 
I'm proud that I, I stood my ground on certain situations that I didn't feel were, were just or not right. You know, like mm-hmm. where they tell you, well, we've been there for months and everybody's just waiting for, you know, the, the locker room is behind you. The, everyone's behind you and they're like, we're just waiting for, for something like to get a, you know, throw me a bone, throw us a bone, throw us something. Like, let us pick up a win. Let us just make a baby face. Like, let us mm. be us. Like, just let us be us, you know, like, and let us do our thing that we showed you we can do on house shows. And it was good. And everybody liked it, you know? So we're like, just, and then they're, you're told to, you know, go out there and get squashed in four minutes and not get anything in. And you're like, can I at least get a German in? And it's like, they're like, isn't that your finish? And you're like, no. <laughs> I've used it in every match that I've ever had here. Uh, how can you think that's my finish? You know, it's like, those are just the things that you were like, you know, like it was, sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. Mm-hmm. And that could be the last thing you ever do. And mm-hmm. in some cases, like for me, I feel like that was it. You know, like for me, it was. I felt like then I got hurt, but I wasn't, you know, like it was just, I don't feel like that maybe put a great taste in people's mouths, but you know, I'm honest. I'm honest about everything. Usually it's too much of a fault of my own, but you know, like you gotta, you know, you gotta stand up for yourself sometimes when you don't feel like things are going the right way or if it's something's unjustly being asked, asked of you. I'm just like, if you want job, if you want guys to, you know, put other guys like you don't like why contract somebody for that right especially now when they can pay somebody half of the price they're you know you're paying anybody else and they can do just as well of, of, of a job you know like that's that's, a, that's know? a really good point though yeah i just i just don't see why you would invest in somebody and then just kind of put that parameter on them and they're not able to go above that i, I just that's baffling to me but i guess you know i guess I mean, that's from a, yeah baffling. i mean from a business standpoint, though, like, doesn't it make more sense? Like, that's what usually a lot of promotions do in general. Mm-hmm. You know, other student promotions, too. It's like, well, hey, I can I can keep my budget down by putting more students or guys from the area that want an opportunity to show something to, to help elevate my guys or our TV guys or our contracted guys and pay them less or nothing. Instead of, like you were saying, like, invest in somebody that you're only going to put a cap on mm-hmm. as you're, th- you're this you're this guy. Like, it's like, you know, like I would want, like, fantasy football, I guess. I don't play it, but I could understand. I don't know anything about it, but I'm assuming you want each one of your players to, to be the best player they can. You're it, not going to put somebody on your team that you're like, well, I just want him to be an average guy or exactly. a below average guy. You want all of your guys to be like – Whatever it is. I don't know anything about fantasy, but, but I'm just saying, like, that's, you know, like, if you're going to invest your time in, in somebody, I want them to be just as good as, you know, the top guy so I can change and swap, swap them out if I need to, you know? Sure. Yeah. That makes sense to me. I mean, that's, you know, love him or hate him, but that's one thing I really like about Vince Russo when he talks is he, when he books, he wants to get the whole roster on and he wants to get everybody, you know, he wants to get everybody over, and I think that's right. that's the right way to go. At least in that aspect, it is. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's like what you know. I mean, ultimately, that's it's you know to accentuate everybody's positives. Like when we went over to OVW, like Paul Heyman's big uh, big thing was he was very big on accentuating your positives and hiding your negatives, and to almost to a fault sometimes that it was like he was able to accentuate so many guys positives that by the time somebody found out their negative, they were like, well, the negative outweighs their positive. <laughs> like, you know, like they were like, these guys were, you know, it was able to camouflage for a long time because he was so good at that. But like, you know, and that's what I mean. Like even in the business, it could be anybody, you know, there'll be, there's always that saying, you know, fake it till you make it, you know? Oh yeah. It's like, you know, you just, you never know. You, just, you never know in wrestling. It's a lot of it. It said it's, it's all timing. It's timing of 
a lot of things and being in the right place at the right time, right person here, so it's the right person says that, you know, like, I've always just been a realist. I just tell you how I feel about something or I'm that I'm probably too honest to my, for my own good. But I mean, I know that I'm generally a good person and a nice person and I want everybody to succeed. I'm not trying to do anything to downplay anybody or hurt anybody or hurt the product or hurt the company at all. You know, I, I want everybody to succeed too. It's just, I understand there's only so many spots, but you know, and that's the one thing too, is there's, there's only so many spots, you know, yeah, especially yeah. in a lot of shows. Yeah, I mean, you're only getting that, you know, two hour or three hour time. You know, I mean, it's, you know, you can only do so much. But I feel like some, some, you know, some, some shows they can do a better job of it. Obviously, of showcasing talents and making sure that you know everybody kind of gets a piece of the pie. Yeah, I mean, look how many guys too are under contract for you know the big promotions and. It's hard to, you know, it's just there's all, there's only so many TV. There's only so much TV. There's only so much time. And I mean, like, honestly, even looking at the product now and some of the products, I'm like, I don't even know if I could hang on a product like that. Like, <laughs> my, body would, my body wouldn't even hold up from the shit these guys do, you know? Like, yeah. it's incredible. Like, I mean, the athletes and the, the caliber of, of athlete today is like a hybrid person. Like, it's just crazy. It's like they were yeah. they were made in a in a science lab or something. Like it's just crazy <laughs> the stuff that they can do. But oh, I'm yeah. like I I can't yeah. I I don't you know I I can't take I like I don't I think like even like a guy like Tommaso Ciampa like as far I think I've heard that like I mean I saw him at an R an R O H tryout camp before he even got signed with them and uh, I knew right off the bat too he was another guy you were like just like you big things you know like you were just like he's gonna do big things and i mean he showed up to that camp and he was hurt and he had a problem with his knee or something and it was like and he still like outshined a lot of guys and it was just like but i think there's only so many you know like i don't know how much his body can hold up too i mean he was already <laughs> had neck surgery i it was like i felt like too was a takeover he worked with johnny gargano yep Yes, they, they did the uh, like the, almost like the white noise. Oh, of, like the uh, Celtic cross, yeah, like the Finley movie. Yeah, yeah, like shame, like off of like something onto a table, and yeah, it just stage. it looked really, it looked really bad. Like looking at just a bad landing, and I, I remembered watching it. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not discrediting anybody, any of those guys, Johnny Gargano, Tomato Chomp, like some, like the best in the world. I'm not discrediting them at all but mm. i remember watching that bump and just thinking they should not have done that and <laughs> a year later he's having neck surgery mm -hmm. i mean i'm just saying you know mm -hmm. like i just unnecessary for me i'm like you know i just felt like it's just there's a line like what do you, what else you know like where does it stop you know, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. It's just I love all the guys, and I love, you know, I love the. I, I don't. I'm, I'm probably burying myself. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, I love, I love the product. I love everything. I think everybody's great. It's just like I said. I'm like, it's just I see things like that, and I'm like, it makes me hurt to watch it, knowing the things that I've felt from doing. And to see like things like that and some of the bumps these guys are taking, and I'm like, it's just like it's scary. Like it's like where does it where does it end? Like where mm -hmm. does the line end? And it, you know, like and for what kind of reaction? Like I don't know. Like it's like mm -hmm. you know, when is it worth scary. it? You know? Yeah, it's just yeah. scary because there's life after this. You know, like I've told a lot of yep. students and guys, especially in during in the indie shows and matches, and I'm like, dude, you have to go to work tomorrow. You know, like I did, like, same thing when I signed with Impact. It was like, I was like, everybody, it was like, all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, you think you're, they think you're like this big TV star and life's changed and you're on, I said, like, dude, nothing changed. I said, I worked a couple of loops, you know, like maybe six, <laughs> yeah. right. six, six loops for a couple of days. I still went to work every Monday after I came back. My body was destroyed. 
after working four matches and like two matches on some days in a row or four days straight flying down, you know, oh. like, and then spending, you know, three days and wrestling straight. And then you're like, you know, like and coming back and going right to work. And I, I, I do landscape contracting, physical work. Like I was a foreman for my stepfather's company. Like, Man. like the only thing that happened is I, I made a couple of brand and half of that went to bills that I had in debt. And then the other half I ended up using when I got hurt because I knew it wouldn't last, mm -hmm. you know, like, so yeah. that's, that's the reality of it. You know, I'm like, that's just the way it is. Yeah, you and you, yeah, I remember. I remember that. Like, I, you were there when Impact was doing like six impacts in two days or whatever it was. It was crazy. Yeah, they were back in the, the Orlando and Universal, and they were taping, you know, every every so often. So, wow, it was just like they were, you know, it's hard, you know. I can't, and I can't imagine the guys on on the road do I mean, it's just like for me now I'm like I don't it's just it's crazy I'm like I can't imagine the schedule well Mario we we thank you for coming on we really appreciate it uh, oh no thank problem you. thank you, you know the, we'd definitely love to have you on again maybe for like a big pay-per-view <laughs> review show or something but you oh, know yeah. or even just uh, you know check up on you and see how you're doing of course absolutely man I would love to do yeah anything I'd love to Anything I can do, I'd love to do it. I would just like to add, and I will say this. I'm going to quote my Stone Cold Steve Austin now, and he's talking about the Stone Cold Steve Austin Unleashed. 316 Broken Skull Ranch, baby. I'm going to say this. If any of the listeners heard maybe a little Skype noise or a little chat, it's our boys of the Heelcast recording their show, so I'm going to say in my Stone Cold voice, I'm trying to record a world-class fucking podcast with Mario <laughs> Bokura. Eh, eh. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really uh, said I really appreciate you guys reaching out to me. Oh, you're too, very welcome. Uh, it's been a while since I've gotten to, you know, t talk wrestling or do some wrestling. I just it's, I could do it all day. So, oh please, <laughs> uh, we love giving the platform for super wrestlers and superstars like yourself to, uh, you know, give them give them the platform to tell their story. And it's really been a joy talking to you. Please promote the social media so everybody can find you, Mario. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Uh, everything, uh, Facebook, so Instagram, Twitter, everything is uh, Mario and um, bottom slash. What is it? Not <laughs> underscore. Underscore. Yes. This I told you, I'm not a big social media guy. Um, <laughs> is that an exclamation Mario, point? Maybe Mario a underscore Bocara, just my name. You search my name and you'll find it. Links will be in the description. I was about to say, dude, we're gonna get that semicolon, we're gonna get the exclamation point, middle question mark. I like your style. Yeah, yeah. It's the underscore. <laughs> <laughs> just looks like a space. Got you. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we'll we'll have it so everybody can check out Mario. This will be on the YouTube awesome. for the Hillcast the whole night. Hurls, take us home. Yeah, well, uh, Mario, once again, thanks and. Uh, Show will be posted in a couple days, so awesome. I can, can't wait for the listeners to hear it. Because, like, like me, you know, we saw you. We, you know, I, I've been watching wrestling for a lot, long time, and you know, I I, 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 like a lot of guys where I can see they have a lot of potential, and then, you know, you just your story's unwritten, you know. So, yeah. it's I, I, we'd love to see you back on, and we're we're hoping that happens. We'll definitely be vouching for you. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm hoping, you know, I hope so, too. I just, you know, like I said, want to just contribute in whatever way I can at this point. And the, the dream was always just to be able to, you know, just do wrestling in some some way, shape, or form. So mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, you know, I'm still, still in the cards for me. I'm going to say this. Listeners, support Mario Bokra. This concludes another edition of My Impact. For Larkin, for Hurls, for Mario Bokra, thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll talk to you in the next episode. Mario, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.